So how are OFDM and XDSL, or DMT, related? And the first thing to say is that they both use the inverse Fourier transform in the transmitter, and then they use the Fourier transform in the receiver. And for more information on this, check out the links in the description below the video for more details on OFDM. And the way that they use the Fourier transform is the same for both. Now OFDM stands for orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So you have orthogonal frequencies and you divide them up to multiplex data sequences. And in that's mostly used in wireless or talked about in wireless. And in DSL, the digital subscriber line technologies, they use a version called discrete multi-tone. But essentially, it's the same concept. So you take your data sequence and you, I'd like to draw it in this direction here. So this is your sequence of symbols that you'd like to send. And we're gonna call that vector X. And you take that and you put that into the inverse Fourier transform. And, that, and what that does is it takes something from the frequency domain and puts it into the time domain. So why was it in the frequency domain in the first place? Well, that's because you're choosing to do the modulation in this way. Let me just say a little bit about that uh, just in a minute. But the first thing here to say is that both OFDM and DMT both use this procedure. And this is a standard procedure sometimes implemented with the fast Fourier transform. It's certainly, it's a discrete Fourier transform, but I've just written inverse Fourier transform there as a generic term. Uh, and both of these take a, a cyclic prefix uh, for reasons that uh, are also mentioned in a uh, video that you can find the link for in the description below. And they put the last few uh, bits or symbols from the time domain sequence, and they put them on this start uh, as a cyclic prefix. So both of them do this. So this is in the time domain. I'll just write time domain here. And this is in the frequency domain here. And uh, let me just say just a little bit more about that. So each of these, we have our data sequence coming in, and we're going to use the data sequence to choose from a constellation. So we still have uh, the idea of modulation from a constellation. So let's say, for example, we're using 16 uh, QAM, for example. Then our data stream would pick one of these 16 symbols. With every four bits, we'd, we'd choose one of these 16 symbols, and we'd give that as the complex number in the first element. Uh, then we would pick another one from the next data coming in, we put that into the second element and so on. So this is a vector of complex numbers. And if we do the inverse Fourier transform, then we will get another vector of complex numbers. So it's important to remember this is complex numbers and these are complex numbers. We've just done the inverse Fourier transform and it's the same for OFDM and for discrete multitone in digital subscriber line technology. So these are the same. Uh, this process is the same. So where is, or you know, why do we do it? Why are they doing it in both of these scenarios? Well, the, one of the main reasons for doing it is to make equalization easy. And uh, again, we see that in the other videos in the links, but let me just explore that in a little more detail here, comparing OFDM with DSL. And to do that, let's look at the channels. So in OFDM, which is used and referred to in wireless communications, in wireless communications we have, if I draw a frequency domain plot here of the channel, then I've drawn these lines here to indicate that we have a, 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 a the channel is a long way from the zero DC frequency. It's at a carrier frequency, which is allocated for that communication link for that wireless channel. And of course, there's also a bandwidth around that carrier frequency, which has been allocated. So this is in the case of OFDM. So we've got OFDM on this side, and I'll contrast that with uh, the digital subscriber line in, in uh, over here, which as I say, the technology is used, is referred to as discrete multi-tone, DMT, but it's in, in fundamentally, it's the same as OFDM in terms of using the Fourier transform. Okay, so let's look at this channel. For the, for the frequency um, of interest across this, this, at this carrier frequency, the channel will look like this. It will be, it will have frequency selectivity across the channel uh, because of multipath 
uh, interference at different frequencies. So at some frequencies, the signals deconstructively interfere with each other and at other frequencies they don't. And again, there's videos on the channel on frequency selective channels. So this is common for a wireless channel. What about for a digital subscriber line? What does the channel look like for DSL? Well, in this case, we are using the frequencies all the way down to zero frequency. So it's not at a carrier frequency uh, up at one gigahertz, for example, a typical carrier frequency or two gigahertz for, for 3G, 4G, 5G communications. Um, but for DSL, it is the twisted pair, the digital subscriber line that you have. And this is a, a, a wire that you have uh, all to yourself uh, coming into uh, your, uh, your modem. Uh, and so it has... At the, the, a roll off, this a typical frequency response of in the frequency domain of the DSL channel is one which has a roll off with frequency. As frequency gets higher, the gain gets uh, less, less uh, transmission of those higher frequencies on that twisted pair copper wire. And I've drawn a little notch here because sometimes you have things called bridged taps, which cause uh, frequency nulls. Uh, this is where, for example, if the twisted pair was rolled out in a suburb and you didn't know exactly where the houses were, you might uh, connect uh, multiple digital, uh, multiple twisted pairs together uh, and then you choose whichever house they're going to be connected to and you leave the others unterminated. And that causes, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's good for flexibility in the rollout, but unfortunately it causes these notches in the channel because of bridged taps. Okay, so the, here's two different channels, uh, but they're both making use of this uh, process with the inverse Fourier transform because they both have an issue with needing equalization. So here the equalization is needed because of these spectral nulls that come about through multipath interference at those frequencies. And here for DSL, it's because of the roll off of the twisted pair channel with frequency, the copper wires, and also bridge taps. They both need to do equalization. And the in, this process with the inverse Fourier transform is a very good way of making equalization uh, easy. And again, there's videos on that on the channel. Let's think a little bit more about this though. This is actually a time varying channel in the wireless case, whereas this is a constant channel in the DSL case. And that's gonna mean things for us uh, as well. It's gonna be different between OFDM and DSL. Uh, one of the things that's common to both as well, another, another thing that's common to both is that you, it, it, because of this notches and because of this roll off and, and the different, uh, the fact that the channel is not flat, uh, this means you do channel coding on in the frequency domain. So for both of them, they do their error correction coding, the channel coding, I'll just put CC here. We do that in the, uh, on the data sequence before we do the process of the inverse Fourier transform. Okay, so I'll put all of this in a box here. Uh, so this is at, in the transmitter where the inverse DFT is happening uh, to translate from the frequency domain to time domain. And, and you could do channel coding on this sequence here if you chose to. But in fact, it's the best idea to do channel coding before you do this process because the channel coding will add redundancy between the bits, the data bits that are here, which means that there will be redundancy across the frequency Band. So all of these complex numbers here will have redundancy that relates each to each other because of the channel coding. And that means that if one of the sub-channels, uh, for example, this one, uh, is interfered, uh, has destructive interference and does not uh, propagate, then you'll get lots of errors in that particular sub-channel. But if you've done the error correction coding in this way so that it's across the frequencies, then the neighboring frequencies, which will be received uh, with no errors because they get good amount of gain, uh, those ones can then will then be used in the decoder at the receiver uh, and will be able to correct the errors that happen from any particular subchannel where there was a spectral null. So if you do channel coding across the frequencies in this way, it means you're doing it across the frequencies and that helps you to overcome errors from uh, spectral nulls. And that happens in both the, or, or even just in, in terms of uh, for the bridge taps here, but also for OFDM especially, uh, where you have this um, multipath in, um, deconstructive interference. So this is a common, another common thing between OFDM and DSLs, you do the channel coding before you do this process.
Um, now, there's what about some of the differences? And they're probably going to be more interesting to look at what some of the differences are. Okay, so in the uh, in the time domain, one of the differences is that in the time domain, um, time domain, uh, in the case of the OFDM, it's it's fine for these this vector here to be complex numbers. As I said, if you've got complex numbers here, which are coming from constellations, when you go through the inverse discrete Fourier transform, you will also get a vector of complex numbers. And that's fine for the case of OFDM because you're going to be multiplying by the uh, by a carrier waveform. And up at the pass band, you're going to have the sine wave and the cos wave. So that's two degrees of freedom, which means you can be transmitting a complex number. You can be transmitting in the sine wave and in the cos wave. And because they're orthogonal, you can send both of those. So complex numbers have two components, and this matches well uh, with what we've got in the OFDM case with a wireless channel. So you've got complex uh, samples is fine uh, for OFDM complex samples. But in the case of DSL, it's a baseband. There's no up conversion to a carrier at a higher frequency. You're exactly wanting to be able to clock these samples out in the time domain directly onto your copper wire. So how do you do that when these are complex? Well, the answer is they can't be complex. So you need to make them real. So in order to make them real, what you have to do first of all, before the inverse discrete Fourier transform, is to adjust or, or create a vector here which is symmetric. Because if you have a symmetric vector in the frequency domain, then you'll have real values, only real values in the time domain. And the way to do that is you take your vector x here, uh, which let's say we number it from 0 for dc. It goes from 0 to n, uh, if that's the length of the... Uh, that's, and this is the Nyquist frequency, and that's the dc frequency when, we've, when we're considering these in the frequency domain. And that, that is what the effect will be of using the inverse Fourier transform. So we go from 0 to the Nyquist, so from dc to Nyquist. I'm, I'm just going to put dc here to remind us, and I'm going to put Nyquist... Uh, here to remind us, um, here, okay. And so what you have to do is then you should take your x vector, which has elements from 0 to n, and you put them uh, in the first part of your vector, and then you take the complex conjugate of your x vector, and you put the elements from n minus 1 to 1. So you're missing out on the DC component and because you only go down to one and you're missing out on the Nyquist because you're not doubling up on the Nyquist. And if you create a new vector out of this vector, the original X vector, plus and then append onto the end of it, the so this is a, written as a row here, and then you append on the end of it the elements from this vector, not including the end two elements, and you reverse the order and make it complex conjugate, then you will have a symmetric vector of length uh, of length 2n, which will be, because it's symmetric, then when you take put the inverse Fourier transform, you'll get a time domain signal which is real. So this will have real samples, and that is important uh, in the time domain for DSL because it's baseband in comparison to OFDM. So that's one of the main differences between OFDM and DSL. Uh, is that you need to do this in the processing. Okay, another important difference, very important difference, is in the, uh, the fact that in the channel state information. So because the channel is known in the case of DSL, I'll deal with that first, in the case of DSL, the channel is known uh, and it's fixed and constant. What that, that means that at the transmitter, you can choose to put different con use different constellations in different frequency subchannels. So for example, in these subchannels here where the signal is nice and strong, you can use a large order QAM constellation, maybe 256 points or even higher in the constellation for that subchannel. But the subchannels at down the end here where there's not much gain, so these ones at the end, in these ones you would probably be choosing to use simply uh, potentially even QPSK a constellation, just four points, or even just binary uh, digital uh, points. So maybe just binary in these ones here. So this is something because the channel's constant, you know what it is ahead of time, you know the, the, the subchannels which are going to have a good amount of gain, and you can use a, a, comp, a, a high order modulation. In the channels where there's not much gain, you can use a low order constellation. And so this is called bit loading. So we call this bit loading in 
uh, in ADSL or VDSL as well, um, bit loading. Whereas in the uh, OFDM case, you don't know what the channel is ahead of time, so you can't pre-decide that some of the channels are good and some of them are not because it's time varying. Uh, and in most cases, the time varying uh, depends on the rate and the amount of feedback you can have between the channel and so on. But in general, you don't know what the channel is. So in this case, you use the same constellation, so the same modulation in all subchannels, same modulation uh, in all subchannels. So this is another difference between DSL, where you can do this bit loading, and in CSR uh, in, in OFDM, where you use the same modulation order. So that's an important difference. And probably the last uh, difference where there's, uh, or last major area I'd like to just touch on uh, is about interference. Um, so in how are the differences between those two, between OFDM and DSL? Well, in, in OFDM, uh, interference comes from multiple users in other cells. So this is multiple users uh, and, and potentially even in the same cell uh, if you, uh, um, in the uplink potentially, uh, if you don't coordinate properly between the users. So it's from multiple users uh, and either in the same cell or more, more often in other cells. Uh, in the case of DSL, it comes from a, a crosstalk when copper wires, the twisted pair copper wires, which are not particularly good for resisting uh, radiation from other wires which are bundled together in the same bundle, uh, and you will get crosstalk uh, from electromagnetic radiation from other twisted pairs uh, bundled together with the twisted pair of yours. So again, it's multiple users. This is coming from crosstalk. It's, a, it's still multiple user. Uh, this is from crosstalk. In this case, it's from other uh, cells. So multi-user in other cells, and this is multi-user in crosstalk from those bundles. So it's a common aspect that you get interference. Of course, the characteristics are different. Um, another sort of common thing, just to touch on the last thing about commonality, about what you can do about the interference, is that in OFDM, often, or typically, you could uh, coordinate multiple users with OFDMA if they're in the same cell. Uh, that's one thing. And also, you can use multi-user MIMO if you have multiple antennas. And this include, this involves pre-coding the signal with across all your antenna elements, and you can do that pre-coding in each of your different sub-channels. So there's more information on the channel for multi-user MIMO. But there is an equivalent in DSL, uh, and this has been more recently uh, made a big jump for DSL, and that is when we call vectorizing. So it's often called vectorizing, um, vectorizing the signals, the signals between different communication, different DSL signals on different twisted pairs within the same bundle, and that's called vectorizing. But actually vectorizing is, in concept, is identical to multi-user MIMO. In here you have multiple different channels between different transmit and receive antennas, uh, and even, even also between different users. And so pre-coding in, well, even just pre-coding in MIMO, but also pre-coding in multi-user MIMO is exactly analogous, and the same pre-coding matrices apply for vectorizing in DSL. So vectorizing DSL has that link to uh, what you do in wireless for OFDM. So here I've touched on some of the main common aspects and then some of the differences between OFDM in wireless and discrete multitone in DSL channels. If the video has been useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out all the information in the link uh, in the description below the video where you'll also find a link to a web page which includes a fully categorized listing of all the videos that are on the channel.